Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth today. Now, this is a new week, praise God, and I'm so glad. You see, when God gives His word, it is His demonstration to, of love to you. That's the truth. God demonstrates His love to you by giving you His Word. And what's your own demonstration of love to God? By keeping the Word that He has given you. And that's how we express love to one another. Praise God. So I'm so glad because God has given His Word. And that's what you're going to be receiving right now. So are you are you ready? Are you ready to have an exciting week? Are you ready to have a glorious week? Praise God. How do I know you will have? Because the word of God has come. Praise God. Can we pray? And remember what the Lord commanded us to be doing every day on this broadcast. Are you ready? Say, Father, today I demand and receive my daily bread. It is my it is coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. The Lord commanded us to declare these words and make this demand every day on this broadcast. Praise God. And, and let me tell you something. Testimonies are already coming in. Praise God. God has daily bread to give to you. Oh, we bless God. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. I know one thing today, burdens shall be lifted, yokes will be destroyed because your truth is coming forth with your anointing and grace. Thank you for the people watching right now. A change is coming to their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. I want to begin talking to you about something the Lord has laid in my heart to share with you. Um, this week and if I don't know if we're, going to con if we're going to conclude on it this week but if we don't then it, it will extend until we finish um, what the Lord wants me to share with you now what is that thing the Lord have commanded me to share with you I'll title it the purpose the hope and the manifestation of our calling praise God the purpose the hope and the manifestation of our calling now the calling i'm talking about is the calling to be a believer the calling to be born again it's a calling praise god it is it is a calling praise god now it's not just the calling to be a pastor you know someone said are you called you say hey no i'm not called praise god you are called peter was was preaching on the day of Pentecost. And guess what he preached when, they, when, they, when the people were wondering, what's going on? When the Holy Ghost came on them and they were all speaking in other tongues. They were like, what's going on? And Peter began to preach to them. And he said, he got to a point, he said, okay, what do we do? And Peter says, repent and be baptized every one of you and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then he made this powerful statement. He says, for the calling is to you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Praise God. This is Acts, in chapter, uh, Acts chapter 2. He says, as many as the Lord will call. Call to do what? Call to preach the gospel. Call to be a pastor. Call to be an evangelist. No, no, not necessarily. Call to be a believer. Praise God. You know, Jesus, when he came, See, people don't understand this. He preached a message. The first message Jesus preached was in Mark chapter 1 and verse 15. When he came, he announced, this was his announcement. He says, hey, let, let's go there. Mark chapter 1. Book of Mark, chapter number 1. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I'll read from verse 14. It says, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Jesus' introductory message. This is the first thing Jesus preached. He says, Hey, the time is fulfilled. Time for what? 
for the kingdom of God to come. So he says the kingdom of God is at hand. Actually, the original is that the kingdom of God is here. That's what he said. The kingdom of God is here. So at hand doesn't mean it's close. You know how we've been using, oh, the kingdom of God is at hand. So it's very close. No, he actually said the kingdom of God is here. And then so what's your response? Your response is repent. That's what you're supposed to respond to the message that Jesus is preaching. The kingdom of God is here. Okay, it's here. So what? He says repent and what? Believe the gospel. So our calling is to believe the gospel. Everyone that has been called is called to believe the gospel. Now, what I'm going to be sharing with you is very, very important. And by the grace of God, I pray your heart be open to have a perfect understanding of what we are talking about. I pray that the Lord will guide my speech and my words so it will penetrate every thought and every negative and obstacle in your mind. Stopping you from fulfilling what God has planned for you. Praise God. So Jesus said, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is here. So repent and believe the gospel. Now, there are a lot of things to look at in that place. One, the kingdom of God is here. Two, it says, um, repent. Repent. What does repent mean? Repent simply means turn away and unto. You see, turn away, then turn unto. See, now... We use these words loosely sometimes and we don't even understand the meaning. So someone goes, mm, okay, you hurt me. Oh, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Now, I'm sorry is not necessarily repentance. I'm sorry is just acknowledging the fact that you did wrong. See? Acknowledging the fact that you did wrong to someone. So what do you say to the person? Okay, I'm sorry, or a group of people. I mean, that acknowledgement. Okay, I acknowledge that I did wrong, so I am sorry. But that doesn't necessarily mean you have repented. You are just saying that next time I'll be very careful not to um, let what I'm doing hurt you. So you have not repented. For example, you're walking and then you stepped on someone. Say, oh, you stepped on me. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. What are you doing? Oh, I don't want trouble just acknowledge that you said i stepped on you i acknowledge it so i'm sorry sorry now it doesn't mean you've repented see it doesn't mean you've repented you may step on another person the next minute yeah that's what I'm, so you keep saying i'm sorry and that's what people you know but I've, I've said i'm sorry now uh, you've said you're sorry but you're still doing what is hurting the person because <laughs> because repentance and that's what people oh god i've done it again father oh i'm sorry I'm sorry. And they're like, why don't you stop doing it? I've been trying. You haven't repented yet. That's why I said to repent is to turn away from and then turn on to. It must be a complete process. Just turning away from is not repentance yet. Repentance is turning away from and then turning on to. So before you say you have repented, you must see that the path you were going was wrong. And then you must also know that this is the right path I'm supposed to be walking on. So the turning away from the wrong path and then facing the right path, that is what repentance is. So you see, you stepped on someone and then you say, oh, I'm sorry. Hey, what's repentance in that? Now, why did I step on this person? I wasn't looking at where I was going to. I think I was on my phone. I was pressing my phone or I was, I was doing, I was distracted by this. So you know what? I'm not going to um, be fiddling with my phone when I'm walking anymore. I'm going to put my phone in my pocket and I'm going to walk and be aware of the environment I'm walking so I don't step on anyone. Now you see, that is repentance. Are you getting what I'm saying? That is repentance. So now when you are now conscious of your environment, you will be quick to see someone is on your way and then you avoid the person. So it's the same thing with your life. You don't say you have repented until you turn away from what was wrong and you see what is right and turn onto it. Did you get that? Praise God. Now, so we have been commanded by Jesus. Now that the kingdom of God has come, he says, repent and believe the gospel. So what are we repenting from? We are repenting from the old way of living. Are you following what I'm saying? We are repenting from the old way of living, the old attitude of living onto the new way that is shown to us 
in the kingdom of God. And how? How is it shown to us in the kingdom of God? In the gospel. So Jesus said, repent, turn away from your usual way of life. Turn away from everything that you're doing. And now believe the gospel. Praise God. Yeah, if you repent, oh, you know what? The things I used to do before, I don't do them again. I, don't, I, I used to be an arm robber. But see, when God touched me, I changed. I changed. I stopped robbing. So what are you doing now? See? So what are you doing now? Now, an arm robber, for example, says he's not going to rob again. Okay, so if you're not going to rob again, what are you going to do? Now, this is what has happened to lots of people. For example, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be touching a whole lot of things. For example, a, a prostitute. Now, you preach the gospel to a prostitute. And many times you find this taking place. And you, you have people who have ministry to destitute people, to prostitutes, to people on the streets. And okay, so they go out, they reach out to them, and then these people are willing to receive the gospel. I've preached to some of them before. They are willing. They, not all of them like what they are doing. They will always tell you, now of course, you know, some of them tell lies, but they will always tell you, hey, this is, this is why I'm doing this thing. So, okay, so if you get a break, if you get a change, you know, if, if we help you, establish you, it will set up a salon for you, if we do all these things for you, would you stop doing what you're doing? Now, some of them truly, genuinely, you know, you know stopped it because they began to live a better life. But you see, this call, I want you to understand something. This call is different. Now, people go into the interlands, and they do lots of work and I appreciate what they are doing. God, of course, God recognizes what they are doing because they are making the society better. But you see, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are preaching the gospel of the kingdom. I want you to understand this. Now, so you, you go to this prostitute or this arm robber and they say, you need to repent. Okay, all right, I'm willing to repent. Okay, so stop stealing. Will you promise me to stop stealing? Yeah, I promise I'll stop still. Okay, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to give you this amount of money. So you go establish yourself. And then when you establish yourself, you now stop stealing. Or you now stop prostituting. Or you now stop staying on the street, whatever it is. And then they say, okay, you, you fulfill your promise. And you send the person through training and all the stuff. And then, yeah, they stop what they are doing. There are chances, hear me. There are chances that when the pressure of life comes, they may go back because the pressure of life will surely come. Now, when you see them turn back, why did they turn back? I will tell you why they turned back. They turned from their way, which was wrong, but they did not believe the gospel. They may be coming to church. It doesn't mean they have believed the gospel. There is something about the gospel, and that's what I'm going to be sharing with you all week. There is something about the gospel that when it takes, when it takes a hold of a man, it completely changes the man. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is the purpose of our calling. Now I'm going to just introduce that because of our time, and then we'll go fully into it. What is the purpose of our calling? Jesus said in John chapter 3, and verse 16, we all know this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Did you see that? So that's the purpose of the calling. The purpose of the calling is God's desire in his heart to give man eternal life. Now, why does he want to give man eternal life? Because man was perishing. So the change, what is going to stop man from perishing is the introduction of eternal life. According to John chapter 3, verse 16, Jesus said this himself. This is the purpose of God. He wants you to have eternal life. Praise God. So the purpose of the gospel, why did you ever go to church? Why was the gospel ever preached to you? Why did God ever call you to believe in Jesus Christ? It is because God wants you to have 
eternal life. Praise God. Our time is up for today, but listen, as we go into this teaching, I pray you will know what true repentance is and you will begin to operate in the realm of the gospel as God intended in his purpose. God bless you. Go out today and be victorious. I love you. Bye-bye.